What political and social factors underlie Sweden's controversial response to COVID-19? Sweden has adopted a far less radical set of policies in reaction to COVID-19 than most other European states. Many other European states are in lockdown, with severe restrictions on people's free movement, with people being advised to only leave their homes for food, medicine. In Sweden, by contrast, people are largely carrying on with their normal lives. While every other country in Europe has been ordered into ever more stringent coronavirus lockdown, Sweden has remained the exception. Schools for pupils up to 16 years, kindergartens, bars, restaurants, ski resorts, sports clubs, hairdressers, all remain open, weeks after everything closed down in next door Denmark and Norway. As the rest of Europe lives under lockdown, Sweden keeps calm and carries on. The Guardian, March 28, 2020. What social and political factors underlie this decision, and why is it so dramatically different to other European countries' response? The reason for Sweden's rather hands-off approach compared to other European countries was summed up rather well by lead epidemiologist of the Public Health Agency of Sweden, Anders Tegnell, who said in an interview with CNBC, My view is that basically all European countries are trying to do the same thing, we're trying to slow down the spread as much as possible, to keep healthcare and society working, and we have shown some different methods to slow down the spread. Sweden has gone mostly for voluntary measures because that's how we're used to working, and we have a long tradition that it works rather well. This tradition of laissez-faire-ism that Tegnell talks about was explored by Johan Norberg in his 2013 essay, How Laissez-faire Made Sweden Rich. Dot. This is quite long but well worth a read. Notably, Norberg argues that rather than Sweden's economic and social successes being a result of the SAP managing to tax, spend, and regulate Sweden into a more equitable distribution of wealth, without hurting its productive capacity, Sweden's greatest successes both economically and socially took place when Sweden had a laissez-faire economy. Sweden's approach to the current pandemic, then, would seem to be influenced by the political traditions of its past. I should note that although Tegnell is hopeful that the current strategy will be successful, he doesn't rule out the implementation of more stringent measures should the data suggest that the laissez-faire tactics are not working. As far as social factors that have influenced Sweden's response go, one such factor is how sparsely spread its population is. This article from Our World in Data notes how Sweden consistently ranks near the top of metrics related to single occupant households, and the country also ranks 50th out of 54th for population density amongst other European countries. It is likely that another factor has been the reluctance of the government to negatively affect the economy more than is required. For example, although taking a hands-off approach with regard to restricting personal liberties, it has taken a far more active role in ensuring the continued functioning of business, and on March 27 announced that it will guarantee 70% of bank loans provided to companies that are experiencing financial difficulty as a result of the pandemic. In conclusion, Sweden's response so far seems to be a combination of the reluctance of Swedes to accept restrictions on personal liberty, note the outcry by opposition parties when a proposal to rule by decree was announced, a tradition of past laissez-faire approaches, and distinct social factors that will potentially help provide a natural defense against the virus.